Hello friends and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where we discuss, demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to us in the official Avid Pro Tools support forum on Facebook. My name is Dave Phillips, audio engineer, Avid certified instructor and lecturer for Point Blank Music Schools and joining me as always is Anders, also an Avid certified instructor at Tonecraft Work in Austria and lecturer for Siegen University in Germany. Hello. <laughs> and joining us, as always, is Avid's master instructor and Avid's audio curriculum manager, all the way over in Tokyo, Mr. Andy Hagen. Bon bon what he said. <laughs> Now, what we do, as always, is wading on the foreign post to throw in our two yen, but there's generally so much, so much. <laughs> now, what we do is wading on the foreign post to throw in our two yen, but there's always so much noise in the group and nuance in the circumstances that the right answers aren't always highlighted. And often there isn't enough information to clearly present the answer anyway. A part of our job as lecturers and trainers is to take complex issues and then boil them down with clear explanations and demonstrations in context. And that's what we aim to do here today. Now before I continue could I ask you guys if you're liking what you're doing could you please subscribe to the channel if you hit the bell icon you'll be notified every time we release a new video and if you're enjoying this particular video please hit the like button and of course if you don't you are just as welcome to hit the dislike button as well. Um, yeah but if you hit the dislike button you need to hit it twice because else it will not stick I think. Yes you need to double click it with your mouse. Yeah. Yes, of course. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> now, today's question uh, comes to us from James on the uh, the Avid support forum, the Pro Tools support forum, and he says, Hi, if anyone can help, I went back to this track after a few weeks to tweak some stuff, uh, but the vocals have gone! Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Uh, if I select auto find and relink, nothing happens. Can you please help me? I thought I'd just read it exactly as it's written on the post because I thought that the spelling mistake was funny, but nobody else probably <laughs> will. I apologise. Please help me. <laughs> um, so this is uh, this is a problem that plagues a lot of users, especially new users, and and as as a as a university lecturer, and actually Andy is a university lecturer of old. Um, you've probably seen this a bunch of times in the Pro Tools labs and I'm sure any uh, if there are any lab technicians Pro Tools lab technicians then you've seen this a whole bunch of times as well um, because what tends to happen uh, when people are moving files around from computer to computer um, files can sometimes go awry well it's not necessarily a case of files will go awry but new users can quite easily break their Pro Tools systems because possibly through not understanding how the filing system works. And I think this this is a thing that can potentially stem from the likes of if you're moving Word documents around and, you know, you, you know your general homework stuff, um, and the likes of Logic that offer you the option to package all of your work right down into a single file, you know, that you can click and you can move around and when somebody else opens that up, it just looks at what's in that entire package and it sees the audio files um, and no problem, right? Uh, but Pro Tools just doesn't deal with audio in that way. And it's one of the things that I, lo I particularly love about the way that this door works is that it, the first thing is that it makes you save um, a, a name your session right out of the gate. Not all doors uh, require you to do that, do they? Uh, so what will happen when you first boot up Pro Tools is that it will, it will make you create a brand new session. And then what happens from there once you name that session and hit create, it will save wherever you tell Pro Tools to save your session. Um, it will create you a directory and it will place in a session file and it will place in the audio files folder and possibly a, a, a couple of other directories as well but the, the the ones that I want to focus on right now um, is the main session file and the audio files now the way that Pro Tools deals with this stuff is that anything that you make in Pro Tools uh, will be saved in your session file so that's your MIDI stuff um, any of your plugin settings your panning uh, your routing everything other than audio files which are stored in here so what needs to happen is if you're going to be moving a session from computer to computer or from place to place is that you don't want to be moving that file around because what's going to be happening now is you're going to be breaking the relationship between the session document and your audio's file now your audio files folder now what 
when you open up a session, actually, let me uh, just redo that because I don't want all my settings to open, uh, my plugins to open. When you open a session, Pro Tools will automatically look for all of the files that exist in your clips list. It'll look for those in the audio files folder within the directory that your session set, your session document lives. So wherever this session document happens to be, if it's in the desktop directory, if it's in the documents directory, um, and it can't find an audio files folder, it will basically create an audio files folder for you. So the 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 number one thing to do with your session document is to always keep this in basically keep all of these files together is really the uh, the ultimate rule uh, but to make sure that your your session document is always kept in the same directory as your audio files folder so that when you open your session pro tools will automatically look in to the directory to see if there's an audio files folder if it sees it's there it's going to look for all of the files that are represented in your clip list in that audio files folder and it will open and it will play as you expected to now let's just close that back down again and let's move a couple of audio files out of it so we can force let's just move all of that base stuff out of there and we can move them back in in a minute so let's reopen that again and we're going to get this missing files error so this is very similar to what james was experiencing and it's basically the the door telling you you've got files that exist in your clip list but they don't exist in the audio files folder or I can't find them in the audio files folder. So what do you want me to do? Uh, do you want me to just ignore the fact that these files are no longer there and we can continue as normal? But what will happen is those files will just appear as, as offline gray blocks here. So nothing will play. Um, do you want to do you want Pro Tools to automatically find and relink those, in which case the app will go into the filing system and, and look for the files to relink and it will automatically link relink link those um, or do you want to manually go looking for them um, now what a majority of people I do uh, I think would do would be to automatically go and find those files but let's just take a step back here I'm just going to click skip for the moment and then close that down because if we went off and asked Pro Tools to go and relink our files they live on the desktop now so Pro Tools is going to relink them from the desktop and then if it if it can find them and then when you continue with that session it's going to always expect those files to be living on the desktop so if you are if you end up cleaning that desktop for any reason a long time in the future um, or if these files live in some other directory somewhere and you forget you can potentially break your uh, your session down the line so what I suggest to people uh, when they when that error appears or that notification appears rather is to ma I suggest go looking for those files manually and then if you can find them drag them back into the audio files folder so that when you reboot that session again everything's back there and, and Pro Tools knows exactly what to look for. Okay, so we have our base O2 track outside of the audio files folder and outside of the session directory. So let's go and load that session back up again and we're going to ask Pro Tools to go and automatically look for this thing. Okay, so what it should do is now it will go through the entire filing system and once it finds it, it should relink it and you'll be able to continue as normal. The only problem with this is that it's not going to fix the problem. It's just going to link Pro Tools to the file that lives outside of the session directory. And that really isn't the way that we want to continue anyway. Um, so that seems like it's found it pretty quickly. Yeah, that was really, really that fast. That was really, really uh, fast. Obviously, as, as Dave said here, uh, maybe you're creating uh, a problem for yourself because if you have a lot of hard drives connected and uh, you have a huge file system this can actually take a, a long mm -hmm. while for for Protoss to find the file and there are other options for you to to do this 
instead. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want me to take it, David? Carry on. Uh, so I have a session here and uh, my problem looks very similar to, to Dave's here. I have nine missing audio files. Uh, and what I will do is use the manually find the link option instead. And in the middle here, you can see a list of all the, of the files that are missing from this song. And, uh, and then you have basically got two different ways of searching here. You have one uh, called find all candidates and you have the other one called find, miss, uh, find links. And I'll just go through the find all candidates version here. Uh, this is a great <coughs> one because uh, because it has the uh, had, Andy. Maybe you should uh, sure. drop in here because <laughs> uh, 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 I, I've forgotten for, forgetting what I'm uh, saying. Y you can only find one right uh, file at a time using the find all yeah, candidates. So the classic method. example is you know every track um, in you know in my Every, every session that I've got maybe has a bass track, right? So, and the first, you know, I'm going to call it bass. And so there's going to be, a, you know, a gazillion yeah, yeah. bass ones, right? And so there's going to, you know, searching by name, it's going to find a whole bunch. So when you don't know exactly what you're looking for, um, find all candidates is a slow but, but a thorough way of searching by individual um, clips. Yeah, and exactly. basically can, it's just can, a list of all of the file names of what it could, what it be, could be. Yeah, it gives you yeah, all yeah. possible ideas, right? All possible candidates. Yeah. Exactly. But, but what you will see here is if I select multiple files, uh, this option is not available. So it's only available mm -hmm. for if you're searching for just one. Uh, so if I click on the virus here, for instance, I have the find all candidates option. And you can see here up, uh, up in the... In the areas to search, I've selected the hard drive where I think it's most li likely that this file mm -hmm. uh, will be, uh, and uh, and you you could probably speed on the searches by not having all of your hard drive selected. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, at this moment, I will just press the find all candidates button here, and it will find a lot of different uh, candidates that could be this file. Um, and for me, I have to to edit the, this list slightly and go in and actually see if I can find it. And this actually looks to be one of the candidates. And if you see here, the name matches, but also uh, the unique ID of the file seems to uh, to match as well. So I'll select this guy and I'll I'll put a little link icon here. And you can see that the link icon ap appears here now. So he will use this file in its location where it currently is. And I'll commit this link and thereby l forever linking this file in this exact location where it currently is uh, to the session. And as a safety precaution, Protoss will ask me again, do you want to commit these links? And I will just say yes. And then there's one less file for me to now staying with for. with anders um, uh session you know does that mean that you have to go th i'm asking you anders does that mean that i have to go clip by clip by clip i have to relink each one of these files manually no uh i did no exactly <laughs> sorry andy <laughs> i cut you off again <laughs> so so what he could what we could also do obviously is to select a whole bunch of these and find the links right so you've got to yeah, should, go right should I do I'm, this? Going show, I'm going to show something else in just a second. Yep. So what he's mm -hmm. got here is a whole bunch of, of clips. Find all candidates is not an option, but if he goes ahead and clicks find links, it'll search and it's going to ask you, are you going to search by name? Are you going to search by file ID, by name and file ID? And we're, let's, let's leave it with this. This is the default, right? Um, match format, match mm -hmm. duration, uh, match modification date. Uh, this is your default. So let's, let's just, for the sake of argument, leave it as is, okay? And uh, go ahead and click yep. OK. Got, there we go. And now you have multiple little commit little wedding rings there in the chains. And all you have to do now is commit your links. And one of the things that Anders says is hugely important. 
it's not moving the file it's committing to that link so it's it's referring to that file in the position where it currently resides which is ostensibly outside of your session right so that could cause an issue later but but for now we've got that problem completely solved and so if he clicks commit links this window closes it asks if you want to commit and then all of his clips now are not grayed out and life is better now yeah, one thing that we should point out at this um, at this um, uh, moment also are these two little indicators, mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. Andy? Um, and um, for for you, the um, I, I'll just revert to the saved version of this again, so I can show you the way it looked when I had missing files in the session. So if I revert, um, you can see that. In the session, as soon as I get this missing files, you can also see up here that I had two red warning lights. Uh, the, the right one is that I have uh, missing files in the session. That might be in the clip list. Uh, mm -hmm. And I also have tam missing files on the timeline, or at least they're offline. Uh, so this is a clear indication that something is wrong here. But as soon as I relink those files and everything is good, they turn green, meaning everything is in place. I have control over all exactly. things. Exactly. Right. No, and, Andy, and, go and, ahead. And, uh, and you corrected yourself, and that was correct. Is It could be a missing file, mm. but what it is is an offline file. And there are other things that can cause either or both of those icons to turn red, which I think is a worthy topic for another show because those things can, you know. Yeah those red icons can mean a lot of things that demand our attention. Now, I'm going to share my mm. screen real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, do, 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 yeah. All right, so I've got a session here, a really, really super simple session. Uh, and and, uh, and just because Pro Tools has shortcuts for everything, impress people at parties, yes, do we have shortcuts in the missing files window? We do. Yes, we do. We do. So, so, um, so I'm going to change this over to this guy. So Command S, which normally is save, right, is skip all. Command M is manually find relinks. And uh, Command A is automatically find a relink. And Command D is regenerate, miss, uh, miss, uh, sorry, regenerate missing render files without searching. Why is it D? I do not know, uh, which is... It was going so well right. up until that point. <laughs> so this one doesn't make, make much sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to manually find a relink. Um, and then, like like everybody else, we're going to see the... I've got the little red guys over here. Um, and I'll search my volumes. And uh, actually, I know it's inside my travel drive. So like Andrews, I think, you know, it, when you go automatic um, and search, you know, network drives and just terabytes of stuff you can really bring a system to its knees and waste time so if you're going to go with with a manual relink if you, if you have an idea where your you know, your files could possibly be yeah just go ahead and refine that search a little bit now you'll see here that i have audio 301 dot wave now who, who was the engineer on that I session? I was. I was. And anybody who says they always name all their tracks without fail is lying to you. Um, so I, I did this because I created this thing. Now, here's the problem is I know because what I did is I changed the name afterwards. So if I go ahead over here and I go to find links... And that's why, and that's why Protoss can't find the file because it now right. has so the name. Right. So it's searching by two <clears throat> criterion. So it, it it links to media by two criterion. One is the file name. The second one is the file ID. The file name you can change. The file ID is the string of numbers which Pro Tools assigns to media. Okay, and and that is something that Pro Tools does. We can't really well. You don't change it. You don't touch it. Right. Um, now I know that. If I search by name, I'm not going to find anything. If I search by name and file ID, I'm still going to not find anything. But if you have a sense, if you if you try to do a search and you and you go by the, with the defaults like like Anders just did, and search by file name and and file ID, and you don't find anything, but you're sure it's in there, try this: search by file ID only, because like I said, you can easily change the name. But you can't easily change the ID. So I'm going to go ahead here, click OK, and 
Did I click OK? Oh, it's still doing its thing. Yeah, it, you can see the task manager working in the background up a spinning wheel, uh, meaning uh, there is uh, There's a little gerbil a background in there. Task. So now, here's the go. thing. I renamed it Poop. <laughs> Why? Because at my core, I'm a 13-year-old child. Okay, and at this point, I can commit my links. Boom. Really? Yes. Boom. And then now that file is committed. So this one of these guys here was was the um, was the culprit, and now they're all back here. So now, and this happens more times than you can imagine, is that people will change the name of the file when their Pro Tools session is closed, and that just confuses Pro Tools because we're looking for two different things. We're looking for names and this unique file ID, and they have to match in order for us to, to recognize that media as belonging to that session. It still hasn't updated that in the clips list, though, has it? It has, because this, remember, this the... is the name of the clip, not the file. I'm just, pro I'm possibly not seeing, yeah, because in the clips list, they all say right, DX. Right, because these are the names of the clips, not the files. Not Remember, the file. clip, so if I go over here. Um, of course, you can rename exactly all of Exactly right. Clips, so now if I course. show, yes, of course. Um, if I show the file name, boom, right here, you'll see that, mm -hmm. there it is, DX03 is named Poop. Why? Because I'm a child, and that's the way that my brain works. Um, now the problem is, is that even though I've solved the problem temporarily, you know, and, and this session's fine. If I just save the session, everything's going to be relinked. But no doubt about it, there's a file that is potentially outside of my session, which, you know, it, it could be a problem. It could not be a problem, but it's important to know where our media is. And sometimes, very often, these kind of problems arise from us not knowing where our media actually is, right? And so, Anders, you wanted to show something on this, right? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, let's get to that. How could that happen that we don't know where our media is? Because Dave explained in the, in the beginning that when we create a session, uh, Pro Tools automatically creates an audio files folder where recorded audio gets saved into. And as I said, recorded audio, that's the, the really key thing here, because once you try to import audio, there is a couple of things that you need to look out for. So I'm going into my session here and I'll just uh, file import audio. We use the shortcut shift command I if you're on a Mac. And um, so uh, this is some audio here that's um, available to me. It's a recording of our show, actually. <laughs> um, so uh, when I click on one of these little audio files, I get some information about it. It's channels one. It's just uh, it's just uh, a mono file here, and you can see it being uh, in the in the same uh, uh, sample rate as my session. So Pro Tools clears this and says. Uh, it can be added directly to the current session. And if I just press the add button here, Pro Tools will play this audio file from its current location, meaning even though this resides in the drop ships where, wherever that is, <coughs> uh, it will play this audio file from this location all of the time. Uh, and if you have a sample library importing samples from a sample library or loops or anything really, or maybe audio from a different session, if it's in the same audio, uh, if it's in the same sample rate, Pro Tools will be able to play it from that location. And that's what happens if you press the add button. But if you press the copy button, it will copy this audio file from its current location and place the copy in your audio files folder, which uh, of course can be really, really good <laughs> um, if you like to have all of your audio files gathered. Why would you want to have it added as a link? Well, that has to do with, of course, if you're working with a lot of huge audio files and you don't want to create copies all of the times, uh, or if maybe if you're working in post-production, you have a gazillion of audio files, and every time you create a copy, it also consumes space. And there are other workflows around actually having one file that you work on from different sessions as well, but that's a whole other story. 
but um, um, if you press add it will be played from its current location meaning outside of your session uh, and if you copy it it will be copied into your session and i'll press open and this mean means that it gets copied and Protoss will also ask me where do you want this audio file to to be in the audio files folder of your session yes that's the location so i'll just press open and it will be copied into uh, my session now and i'll put it on a new track and this is the new audio file that i've imported not only to the session but also into the audio files folder so to add to to this is if you have something like the workspace browser open uh, or just from finder, finder and you want to drag and drop stuff into your session so let's uh, see if i just grab a, a nice dublin castle door here um, and i wanted to have this in my session i just drag and drop it now where does this castle door actually reside well that's a bit more tricky mm -hmm. to know uh, if the audio file is in the session um, sample rate, it will just get added, meaning it will be played from my NAS drive that's behind me. Uh, so it will be linked to the session. But if it's another sample rate than my session is, it will be automatically converted into the sample rate of my session without asking me. <laughs> and it will be copied into the audio files folder of my session. But there is a way around this, or actually there are two ways around that. And that is if you hold option while dragging in stuff from the workspace browser or from the finder, you will make a copy that will reside in your audio files folder. So in this case, you could maybe have seen it uh, flashed an offline, yeah. uh, uh, offline uh, thingy here. I'll show you this once more. So keep a look on this little light up here. And that will turn red while Pro Tools is copying this uh, audio to the audio files folder. So look at this right now. And you can see it turning red and then going back online as soon as he has copied this into the audio files folder. And there is a nice little setting if you, if you don't want to constantly think about this. Uh, you can go to Setup Preferences. Under Operation, you select uh automatic no it's sorry under, i'm i lost here it's under processing <laughs> ah, it totally is i'm <laughs> sorry <laughs> you need to edit this no keep it in keep it this is no <laughs> this is what this is the one subject i think that always catches because there's so much stuff in here and you never never entirely sure where everything's kept right. So let me correct myself. So I, I already understood that Dave never ever edits out my <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> but um, in the setup preferences under processing, you have the autom automatically copy files on import. So if you select this guy, uh, Protoss will always, uh, always copy stuff to your audio files folder. Uh, if you um, if you drag and drop stuff into Pro Tools, which is a great feature if you if you want to have all everything in your audio files folder, and it's a really natural way of working these days, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's... Yeah, but it, I, I guess that depends really on how you're working. You see me not clicking this box, and that's because I work a lot in post production for for film, and I really like the fact that I don't copy everything of into course. my audio files folder and there is a couple of times like i said there are workflows mm -hmm. around this mm. uh, specifically where you can change out an audio file and that happens to all of your session that are using this yeah, file yeah. and uh, which can speed up the process it, I, I find with pro tools specifically that it's this door that requires you to really understand the fundamentals of how the the files are being managed because the if you're a hobbyist you know you it, you, you the worst that will happen is that you'll lose your song. If you're working on client sessions, then this is exactly what the client's paying the money for, isn't it? It's the it's yeah. the asset. So if you break somebody's session, um, it can go any of a number of ways. Now, 
Yeah. So uh, Andy, so now I've I've shown the, the different ways of like adding uh, stuff to your session and keeping it in the audio files folder or not keeping it in the audio files folder, meaning linking audio to your session. So how can I gather everything uh, when I need to go to my friends uh, and mix this song or to a studio? Well, thank you, Anders, for asking that question. And I'm sure it wasn't rehearsed at all. Um, no. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so, and Anders brings up, I think, a really good point, um, is that whether whether to copy, what, that, that preference in, in the preferences window of, of automatically copying files uh, on import, um, it really comes down to your personal you know, your personal preferences. It really is a preference. Um, just so long as you understand the behavior of Pro Tools otherwise. Now, um, can mm -hmm. I mix and match bit depths? Yes, right? So if you drag something yes. in it of a of different bit depth, doesn't matter if they play well together. Can you mix and match um, WAV files and, and um, AIFFs? Yes, nice. you can. Um, yes. But one thing, can you mix and match interleaved and non-interleaved? Yes, you can. Um, but the one yes. thing that you cannot <clears throat> match together, you cannot mix and match, is sample rates. And so... Well, well, you could, but it would play back well, the wrong speed. Well, you can force it, but, but, that, but that's, <laughs> a, that's an pitch. entirely yeah. different show. But nominally, yeah. <laughs> what doesn't mix and match is sample rates. So if you try to drag in a, uh, a file of a different sample rate, then it will always convert it and make a copy locally into whatever folder you have assigned. And, and, and that's another topic that can get bigger. And we might talk about uh, disk allocation and all that stuff. That's, that's, that's a different topic than what we're talking about today. But here's... And if you want to know about that, you should comment exactly down below. Exactly right. We can right? talk about that. Um, now, now, here's the thing, though. Let's say that there's files all over the drive, you know, 50 files. You, you, you've gotten your session. You've relinked it. But you've got bodies buried everywhere, right? And you just want to be able to, to archive this so that you can either save it for later or you can move it to another location. And there's, there's one way that's going to kind of get you out of jail. Um, and I'll share my screen. Okay, so thus far we've talked about how to find lost files and relink them, right? To, so that your session can run, even if files are in different places or in different names than they were originally. And that's great. That's a great way to solve a problem. But here's another way of potentially avoiding the problem in the first place. So what I've got here is, is a session that has 100 tracks it's named 100 tracks and there's something interesting about this session is that because there's so many tracks i've split it between two different drives so i've got my travel drive and in here i've got my 100 tracks uh, session folder and in the audio files folder i've got tracks 1 through 50 right now on another drive my audio drive number one i've got another folder called 100 tracks in the parentheses audio for tracks 51 through 100 and as you might expect it's got the audio files for tracks 51 through 100 and why did i do that i split it up so that both of those drives can work reliably and i'm not overworking the throughput of either one of those drives it's a thing called disk allocation which we can talk about in a, in a different episode but here's my thing is if i just move the session file in the audio files folder half of my audio will not get moved with it and that can cause uh, all the kinds of problems that we're, we've been talking about so far. How can we avoid that? Here's how you do it. So if I go to Pro Tools, and I'm going to go to File, Save, Copy, In. And this is a, a great way of archiving. It's also a great way of kind of corralling your media into one place. And you can change the version of your session. I'm going to leave it as my latest session. You can change your audio file type. You can change your sample rate. You can change your bit depth. You can change whether or not it's interleaved. I'm going to leave all that alone for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, I do want to copy my audio files. Um, and I could convert them to the specified format. In other words, if they weren't uh, broadcast wave, it would convert them to broadcast wave. Uh, I can also choose not to copy rendered elastic audio files. And if you use a lot of rendered elastic audio, that can take up a lot of space. And if you're archiving, maybe you don't want to waste that space. So if I tick this box, then what will happen is it will not copy the rendered audio files no problem, because when you launch that archived copy again, it will 
rebuild those rendered audio files. So you don't lose anything. It's just a way of saving space if you want to. I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm not using any video files, so I'm not going to click this box. It didn't matter if I did. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. It's going to ask me where I want to put it. I'm going to put it on the desktop so I can easily find it and delete it. Uh, and I'm going to put, I'm going to call this 100 tracks backup one because I'm going to show you two different methods. Um, so here we go. It's processing. It's doing its thing. It's making the copy and it's putting it on the desktop. Now let's see what we get. So I'm going to go over here and let's go to the desktop and you'll see that I've got 100 tracks backup one. If I open this up, you're going to see my session. Great. And I'm going to see my audio files folder. And in that audio files folder, I've got 100 of those audio files. Great. Fantastic. So it basically took audio from a number of different places and it brought it all into one location. If I take this and I use this as my archive, or if I share this or if I or do anything with it, I have now ensured that all of my media that I need based upon those checkboxes that I chose has been put into one place. Now it is a great archiving tool. It's also a great collaboration tool so that you don't, you know, drop files as you move sessions across different drives. Now, here's another way to do this, because remember, I split the audio onto two different drives for a specific reason, and I might want to maintain that separation. And there's a great little workflow that works here. So I'm going to go ahead back to um, save copy in. And then I'm going to go to the same things I could choose to do whatever. I'm going to copy my audio files. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to preserve folder hierarchy. And let's see what we get when we do that. So I'm going to go ahead. OK, click OK. And I'm going to call this 100 tracks backup. I call this 100 tracks backup two. There we go. And it does its thing. Now, let's see what I get in the second method. So if I open that up in my desktop, so I'll go back to desktop here, and you'll see I've got 100 tracks back up too. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that the session file is a shortcut because originally the session file was on my travel drive. And you can see here that it maintains the entire folder hierarchy. So I know exactly where all my bodies are buried. So I can recreate, if I wanted to, the exact location of where that was. Or I could just go ahead and click the, the, um, the alias. That's not a problem. Now, notice also that if I go into the audio files folder of this subfolder, you're going to see tracks one through 50, right? And then I've got another folder called audio drive one, which is named after my audio drive. And the folder here is the audio for tracks 51 through 100. Great. And so all of it is still in the same location. But the whole point with this is if I wanted to, I could you know, take that backup and I could reallocate it to different drives. I could just drag this to another drive and then relink the files, basically redoing the disk allocation that I've done for the session. But either way, um, save session copying is a great way to get all your media together so that when you archive it or when you move it, you know that you're moving everything and you're not going to get surprised by this missing files uh, message. Uh, obviously, why that would be a huge advantage when uh, um, maintaining this structure if you, if, is if you're splitting up your audio tracks right. on different drives just because you couldn't play them back on just using a single drive. So that would be a huge advantage knowing what... Uh, tracks were recorded to what that's drives, what that's, right? That's yeah, that's primarily that. what it's for, is so that you can re, you can be reminded of what your file organization structure is so that you can recreate it if you need to, you know, sometimes years later. Mm. Uh, and one thing to note, obviously, all other things that resided in these folders weren't copied, just the stuff that belongs to this that's session. Right. So course. if you want to, um, yeah. if you've got video, so for post-production, you want to make sure you copy all your audio and all your video, right? So that mm -hmm. makes a, it, it's very particular mm -hmm. about what it's making a copy of. But that's 
save session copy is a very common way to take a session where the media has just exploded all across your system to bring it all into one location so that you know it can play back reliably it's a great tool for archiving as well because you can only you can ask it to only save thing uh, copy things over that are on the main exactly timeline right. so you can get rid of all of your all of your, your spurious and ex external takes and stuff yeah you've got <clears throat> yeah great Go uh, i i mean the, these are all like um the stuff that you really need to know about where your your mm. files are or potentially are and uh, i think um, um it it's vital for your success <laughs> to know how to gather the yeah, resources it's, it's vital for the, uh, the, the the consistency of your sessions yeah, you know, <laughs> and the continued use of your music production you know, it, you know sometimes you know in, in colleges and we're all we're all teachers here uh, you know sometimes you get that that teacher that's you know you're more like a drill instructor and he can he tells you all the different ways that you can get fired right you know it's like don't do that or get fired you know, you know all these different mm -hmm. things and, and and to be honest there's very few things that that you could do that will actually get you fired. Losing files is one of those things, right? That you know, if you yeah. if you lose the final product or if you if you can't recall your work, it's like you didn't do it. Um, and it's it's potentially the the most important single skill in in you know non musical skill that is of 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 working with Pro Tools is being able to take care of your media, knowing where it is, knowing how mm -hmm. know, knowing how to manage it, and knowing how to to collect it all all back together when you need it. Yeah, the, yeah it's funny that the most the, the most important subjects are always the most dry completely, to discuss, right? isn't it? <clears throat> But but uh, and also just as a statement to how important this is and that it's really considered as basic knowledge is because everything we talked about today almost is like Pro Tools 101 stuff and in the very first uh, it is uh, Pro Tools training course yeah. for, for Pro Tools. So you should check this uh, course out if you haven't because there is so much goodness in, in that course. Or, or just have a session with a, a, a Pro Tools use a Pro Tools instructor, preferably, <laughs> you know, you do one-to-one yeah. -one private stuff is just as easy as you can do the, uh, the, the full certification. But there's a, and there's a lot of confusion um, out there, obviously, from, from some of the questions that are, are posted, you know, is people are, are, you know, are panicked because they, you know, they open up a session that somebody gave them and stuff's not being found. Mm. And why, why would that possibly be? And what are the possible solutions? And hopefully we've, we've given you a couple of them. Yeah, we've gone into a whole bunch of stuff. There, there was a couple of things that I wanted to touch on before we go, though. Uh, if I can share my... Do we have time for more? It's, it's, I think it's, it's fairly long. We're yeah, cutting out I've like... I've only got a couple of... Five per, 50% of this whole thing, yes. Yeah, when when, when, okay, when Dave's okay. done editing it, it's probably Dave, 10 minutes ahead. long. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely have aged. <laughs> You're going to get your editing chops up on uh, this one. Oh, jeez. Okay, oh, let's hide that thing again. Um, okay, so everything that we talked about so far is all about the uh, file management and uh, working with our with our audio files folder, really. Um, but there's a couple of things that we can do to kind of minimize some of these potential problems. Uh, the first of which is your clip list management. Um, if there's a if there's a bunch of stuff in here that you, you you've imported things and and you know you've gotten rid of it, you can get rid of some of the things from your clip list um, just by clearing them out, um, so that the, the files that you don't need to even think about anymore, you can just clear the references from them. Because even though you can delete stuff from the audio files folder, that doesn't automatically mean they're going to disappear from the clips list, does it? You know, you you can have a lot of clips in there that all the references that are still in there that don't point to anything anymore so you can go up to the little thing and you can click clear um and you, then decide how you want to delete those you know file, th those references one of the things i do completely. just before you you do that um there's it's 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 for me it's almost a two-stage process where um if you go ahead and cancel out of that um if you go up to that pop-up menu the first thing i do is i uh go to select unused oh all of your unused stuff, and that's yes. going to basically <clears throat> show me everything that i'm not using and could potentially then safely get rid of absolutely 
Yeah, okay. But safe, safely, you say, but of course, if you've added these, like if you're using samples that lie on a, a different hardware drive or anything, and maybe that's being used by some other Battle. session as well. So obviously be careful yeah, not to delete stuff uh, directly from here. I, I'm You know, one of the things that, that I do yeah. is I will, I'll do save session copy, open the copy, mm. And then I'll delete all the unused because you know at that point that it's dele it's deleting, mm -hmm. you know, all the files that that it's made, you know, in in the in the audio uh, audio yeah, yeah. folder, and you know there's no chance of you, you know, torching your sound effects library or something like that because torching sound effects mm -hmm. can make you yeah, very unpopular in the workplace. <laughs> oh yes. So that's 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 number one. Just keep your clips list under control. And um, the second thing is that remember that when you stick when you're working with tracks in uh, an elastic audio mode and then you stick them into rendered processing and he was t touching on this earlier on that they actually end up in your rendered files folder so if, if you end up moving i mean you, you may think you're being clever and you can you say right, i'm going to take that and i'm going to take that with me and drag those away um, but you've got some elastic audio stuff going on you may not remember that you've got some some rendered files in there and with those gone you can also get a similar um, files missing uh, message, can't you? And it just tells you that there's rendered files that are missing. It still brings up the same box. You've got to read the, the description to tell you what's right. missing. Um, but you may have some rendered files that, that you've lost. Also, if you're working with Melodyne, um, when you capture into Melodyne, those then get stored into, your, into a Melodyne folder within mm -hmm. the session directory um, and every so often those can delink um, and you may end up having to go into Melodyne and specifically clicking the, the the relink procedure in there I don't have Melodyne on this system so I can't demonstrate it um, but something else to remember uh, and also even though files exist in the audio files folder every so often and it's really rare unbelievably unbelievably rare uh, but Pro Tools can sometimes not see those uh, when you boot the session up and it just wants you to to relink them back in the audio files folder. I don't know why that would be. I don't know if you guys have got any uh, any comments on what could cause that. But it, as I said, it's incredibly, credibly rare. But it has been known spontaneous to happen. unlinking used to be more common than it is now. Thank God. Um, it's uh, it never. I don't think it ever was frequent. Um, and now, you know, as as Dave says, it's it's, it's pretty darn rare. Um, the one thing I'd, I'd add to what Dave said is that if you, let's say, by accident, you trash your rendered files folder, you've lost nothing, right? You'll get you'll get a message that comes yeah. up that'll say your rendered files full are, are, are gone. Don't panic. Just simply re-render them. Um, because what happens, mm -hmm. and one of the great things about Elastic Audio, in fact, is that it's a first-generation process on the original file. So as long as you haven't lost the original file, you're fine, and it will just continue to, it'll just uh, basically recreate those files right there, which is why, I don't know how you guys are, but I when I archive, I usually don't archive my rendered files because I know that I can save some space, mm -hmm. and when I open up the session again later, it'll just completely, it'll, it'll recreate those rendered files. Well, once I've finished Elastic Audio editing, if I'm happy with the, if I'm happy with the performance, I'll just commit to them anyway. <coughs> That's another way to do it. <clears throat> yeah. So I think we've talked as much as we can on, on that specific subject. There's a lot of things to think about. If you ever presented with that missing files uh, notification, there's a number of things that we've uh, we've given you to think about that you could potentially go and fix it. It's, cer it's certainly unlikely to be a problem. It's just that Pro Tools can't find the files that it want, it needs to be able to run the session properly. All you've got to do is go and find them and then relink them. Hopefully uh, you haven't deleted them forever. Um, so I hope that was useful for you. Uh, all he's been to say is uh, thank you very much to Anders. Thank you. Thank you uh, once again to Andy for being uh, incredibly clever. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Anders is also clever as and well. And you're clever, Dave. Oh, thank you. um, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, 
thank you to all of you guys to, for joining us. Please join us in our next episode uh, where we'll be discussing more Pro Tools questions. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, please like the video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Go and find us on our ProToolsAnswers.com website as well. You can also subscribe there. Uh, we're dropping a whole bunch of stuff quite regularly at the moment. Um, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to provide you with some answers to your Pro Tools questions uh, in, the, uh, in the coming future. Uh, so thanks to Anders. Thanks to Andy. Uh, my name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers, and we're out.